I have found an issue with our Wi-Fi that needs a fix. Hello everyone, Chris here. We've been doing a lot of content around our MKS skipper board, but I keep finding odds and ends that might be handy for you to use if you're doing your printer build with one of these. And a really strange issue that I found is when you reboot this board, the Wi-Fi doesn't come back on its own. If you're using an Ethernet cable, you might not notice this issue, but it's really frustrating to have to figure this out every time you boot up. And that's one of the biggest downsides to using an MKS board or any board that has an integrated Linux environment. They give you a distribution to use and then you're locked into that one. It's not integrated into the mainstream distribution of Linux that you might be using. So if they stop upgrading that or there's an issue, you're kind of out of luck. But I'm going to walk you through the steps today to fix the Wi-Fi issue that I see. All of the things that you need to do to edit Linux, to get it up and running, it's going to seem a little ridiculous to make this happen, but at this point, it is what it is. Hopefully MakerBase fixes this distribution issue so we don't have to do things like this going forward. But this might save you a lot of time. So let's go ahead and get into it. So here we are back to the PuTTY tool. Now, there are two logins. If you're doing things with Clipper, you're going to want to use the MKS login. You're going to see that here more in a moment. If you're dealing with a system, like we're going to do right now to correct an issue, you want to still use root like we did in the Linux video. So root password is makerbase, all lowercase, for both of those IDs. Now, the issue that I'm running into is that every time I reboot the board, the Wi-Fi doesn't come up automatically. And I don't know if that's based on the distribution that they have, they just don't have things set up right, or the Armbian config, I don't know, but I'm going to show you how I fixed it. It's not the most straightforward thing in the world, and if you use an Ethernet cable, you probably don't have this problem. But if you do have this problem, I want to show you how to get it corrected. It, this is a one and done, you won't have to mess with it unless you try to upgrade, which I really don't recommend you do. So what's the issue? We have our Wi-Fi module plugged in, we've rebooted the board, but the Wi-Fi module isn't actually working. If you do an IF config, that shows you all of the network interfaces that are on the board. And you can see that it sees the WLAN interface here, but it doesn't give you an IP address. And if you don't have an IP, you're not going to be able to get connected up to the network. And I've reset this image from the last Linux video that we did so that I can walk you through a couple of different scenarios. So this is a fresh install. You might have done some of this already, but let me show you how to do it so it's going to work first time out. So if we run that Armbian config, Armbian dash config, like we did in the Linux video. Again, the menu is really wonky, but we'll go to network and we don't have a Wi-Fi option. That's because it doesn't know anything about that module. It knows it exists, but it doesn't know what it is. And the big thing about the newer versions of Linux is called Network Manager. That has to be running. Now, you can run this clear command to try to get Network Manager up and running, but with this version of the distribution, it doesn't start automatically. So that's the first thing we need to fix. We're going to have to have Network Manager. So let's back out, and we'll exit. If you do a system contil, and you really don't need to know all this. I'm just trying to explain it. But system CTL status network manager capital N capital M. It's dead. It's not active. So we're going to have to have that. We're going to control C and then we're just going to bring that system control command back up and we're going to let network manager start at boot. So we're just going to type enable instead of status. That's going to put it in the startup script so it will start every time. And let's just go ahead and start it as well. Now it's up and running. Let's do another IF config. You can see the WLAN module is there, but we still don't have an IP. That's because we need to restart that module before it will grab an IP. Now that Network Manager's up, we should be able to see it. But we still need to reboot it. Unplugging it and plugging it back in would do the same thing but you don't want to have to be at your board every time your printer boots. So if you need to reboot it, you can just do USB reset. That's the command we need, but we need to know what to reset. But when you run that, it's going to give you some options of what's plugged in USB. We need the ID. This is the same as vendor ID that we've seen in other videos. 
but we need those IDs to be able to reset a specific module. So we'll just bring up USB reset again. We'll copy these values, paste it right there, and hit enter. So it's reset our wireless LAN module. So now, if we go back into RBN config, if you've never done this before, now you can go ahead and set up your Wi-Fi, just like we did in the first video. If you go to network this time, there's Wi-Fi, because network manager is up, and we've reset the interface. So just go ahead and hit enter. It should be able to see all of your wireless networks, select the one that you'd like to join, enter your password, we're connected, and we can quit and get out of RMBN config. So now we're good, we're up and running. If you do IF config one more time, you can see our wireless LAN now has an IP address. But even though we're starting Network Manager on boot, what happens when you reboot now? Let's just go ahead and do it. So we're back up, let's go ahead and log into root again. If you do an IF config now, we're back to the same state, we no longer have an IP. And what I'm thinking is that Network Manager and when the Wi-Fi interface comes up, they're out of sync. Network Manager should come up first, then the interface. That way they don't get confused and you get the IP automatically. Now I know that seems wonky, we shouldn't have to deal with this, but this, it is what it is with these distributions. So I'm just going to give you a quick patch. All you need to do is do that USB reset again to get it up and running. So remember, USB reset, you need your ID. So just paste it there. IF config again. There's your IP. You're good to go. Now, you don't want to have to do this every time you boot. So let's bring up that command again. We know, hopefully, you're going to use the same dongle over and over. We're just going to grab this command. Remember, we're in root. We're using the root user ID. So we're going to grab this command. We'll copy it like that so we can paste it. And I'm just going to add it to rc.local. Anything in rc.local gets ran at boot. And this is going to solve the problem. So I'm going to do nano. That's the text editor. Forward slash etc. Forward slash rc.local. And anything above the exit, these are all comments. Anything above that exit is going to run at boot. So just paste it in putty, right click, right there. It's going to run every time. Start your module. You won't have to mess with this ever again. Control X, Y, enter to save. And just for fun, let's reboot one more time to make sure we're good to go. Logged back in after that reboot, IF config. There's our IP, we're all set. We'll just verify we can still get to main cell or fluid. And the printer looks good. Notice we don't have any errors because we plugged in our thermistors. That's really the only thing you need to get up and running. It'll throw an error automatically, so we know out of the box, Clipper has been flashed to the MCU. Everything is up and running as expected. So there it is. Now Wi-Fi has been starting on reboot every time. I haven't had to deal with it. And if you're using Wi-Fi, you definitely don't want to have to mess with this every time you start your 3D printer. Again, this is pretty ridiculous. We shouldn't have to deal with things like this. But given the distribution I have right now, there's no fix for it that I've seen. So I wanted to at least create some sort of fix so I could get you up and running faster. Hopefully you found this helpful. That is it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.